Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're starting a new set of videos on the life and death of supermassive stars. And supermassive stars have a very unique lifespan, very short, and a very unique ending on their lifespan. And so we'll talk about the various ways in which stars live and die when they're supermassive. First of all, let's go back to our HR diagram. What we want to do here is to see how much time the more the larger than average star, the supermassive stars, spend on the, on the HR diagram and on the main sequence of the HR diagram. For example, a star the size of the Sun, which is considered a G2 spectral class star, lasts about 10 billion years on the main sequence, which means that the Sun will be converting hydrogen to helium in its core for about 10 billion years. We've gone about halfway, about four and a half billion years, so we have about five billion years of hydrogen left in the core of the Sun to keep it as a main sequence star. Once the star ends with this process of turning hydrogen to helium, the Sun will do that in about five billion years, it will convert into a supermassive red giant. And so, not, I shouldn't say supermassive, but a large red giant. And when that happens, life on Earth will end no way will we be able to live on the Earth when our Sun turns into a red giant. So, nothing to worry about. We have about 5 billion years left to go. What about the bigger stars? Well, depending upon how much mass they have, starting with one that has a 25 times the mass of the Sun, that star will only last about 3 million years on the, on the main sequence. Now, those are, of course, the very largest of the large blue giants. 15 times the mass of the Sun, it will burn up through its hydrogen, into turning into helium in about 10 million years. And if it has 10 times the mass of the Sun, it will last about 20 or 30 million years on the main sequence, converting hydrogen to helium. Then when the star gets a little bit smaller than that, like 5 times the mass of the Sun, it will last about 100 million years. And 3 times the mass of the Sun, it will last about 600 million years on the main sequence. So you can see they have much shorter lifespans than stars such as the Sun. And then if you go down below that, for the very small red stars of the M-class stars, well, those stars will last hundreds of billions, even as much as a trillion or two trillion years for the very, very small M-class stars, the very small red stars. Also get a better feel for how we use the spectral classes. Notice that on the, on the horizontal axis here, we have what we call O, B, A, F, G, K, M class stars. Notice the O class stars are the very largest of the large blue giants. The B are large blue giants. A are small blue giants turning into white stars like Sirius. Then the G class stars are stars like the Sun. And then anything smaller than that, K class stars are orange stars. And M class stars are the small red stars. Here you kind of have an idea of how big they are relative to the Sun. An O8, which is about the largest of the stars that are out there, have 23 times the mass of the Sun. A B0, 17.5 times the mass of the Sun. A B3, 7.6 times the mass of the Sun. And a B5, 5.9 times the mass of the Sun. So you can see that B-class stars and O-class stars are just absolutely gigantic stars. Then we have the A0 stars, 2.8 times the mass of the Sun. A5, 1.8 times the mass of the Sun. And F5, 1.2 times the mass of the Sun. So those are stars just slightly bigger than the Sun. The Sun is a G2 class star, one times the mass of the Sun, obviously. And then we have the K class stars and the M class stars. K5 is a 0.67 times the mass of the Sun. And M0 is 0.51 times the mass of the Sun. And M5 is 0.21 times the mass of the Sun. Now, realizing that the average size star in the Milky Way galaxy, about 250 billion stars, the average size star is about 0.4 times the mass of the Sun, which means the average type star is a class, an M-class star. So there's more M-class stars than there are all the other class stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Notice that the, it's probably about an M2 or an M3 when we get down to about 0.4 times the mass of the Sun. So that gives you kind of an idea of how long these very large stars stay on the main sequence, converting hydrogen to helium, and it gives you a better idea of what we mean by spectral class and how they classify the various class stars relative to their masses, and that is how it's done. No, those don't really make any sense. Well, they don't, unless you're an astronomer. But 0, A to B0, to B3, to A0, to A5, to F5, G2. So notice, 
You start at like B0, you go B1, B2, B3, B4, all the way to B9, then you have A0, A1, A2, A3, all the way to A9, they have F0, all the way to F9, G0, all the way to G9, and so forth. Yeah, but what's the whole Well, those are spectral classes. I know astronomers are strange types of people and use very weird ways of classifying things. So that's the way they classify stars. So when you go up to an astronomer and say, hey, what's an F3 star? They know exactly what you're talking about. Ha <laughs> ha